sorry it took me so long to get to this kit uh can um okay so it the react international library depends on this babel plugin from yahoo that you can use and i'm just going to drop this into a babel rc so i set up an empty project um with a webpack and a babel config so i'm going to open up babel rc oh looks like i already have it open there it is. I'm going to drop in this plugin. And so what this will do is it'll drop all of the extracted messages into a build messages folder. Where I normally point this is the same folder I put the Babel cache in because I process them again into something else for the for our particular vendor needs. And then this option, enforce descriptions means it won't compile unless the developer puts a description next to the message. And I'll show you what that looks like in a second. So we're going to our, uh, our messages, and it looks like the last... Sorry, I use this project for all sorts of things. Um, last thing I was using this was for like a simple developer tools thing. So I hope that's not too distracting, but I'm going to npm install React Intel and save that. And I'm also going to install this Babel plugin. And these two things um, sort of coexist, except for when you look at uh, this React Intel, I don't think you want version 1.2 like we just got, the, um, because they they work off of mix-ins in version 1.2, but version 2 is kind of nice because it's built with higher-order components. So you can use the ES6 class syntax, which which we use. We don't use React.createClass. We use um, sort of the ES6 class syntax. So let me see what the package JSON is for this, um, so I can install it. Uh, two dot two beta. Okay, so now we have sort of the React interface, so we can import. Um, this is sort of the default way of using it, is using this formatted message component. And then all you do is you drop in this component. You give it an ID. We usually name this the same thing as the component, and then we namespace it within there. So sort of taking some hints from BEM, but then you have this description, which is sort of uh, something for the translator. This is a greeting in the counter UI. And then you would have your default message. Now this is your English translation. And you need to set up uh, right now I have a Redux provider in here, but I believe React International also has their own provider called the Intel provider right there. So I'm going to go grab that guy. And obviously you only need to do this at the top level of your app. You don't need to do it below. And then What's interesting about this internationalization provider is you specify um, the locale in here. So this is where you'd basically, because in order for it to pluralize the messages correctly, it needs a locale. And you can load in different locales. And in order to get this whole thing working in Safari, you're going to have to polyfill the, the INTL, you know, the INTL it's not ES6, but it's kind of a, it's a web API that is built for internationalization. So now, if I start Webpack Dev Server, maybe it's not 8,000. I forget between this and Elm right now. I'm kind of all over the place. 8080. So we have Hello World in here now. If we open our project, we can see in this build folder, and messages, modules, see they map the, the component structure. 
and then we have main.js and if I open main.js main JSON sorry it has extracted that message so what we do is we basically flatten all of these into one file with just the description and the default message and then this becomes the object key and so what's what's beneficial about that is the translators then have the context and it's pulled right out of your app so when you delete that that message or that component you no longer have to maintain the strings file yourself because you're doing it um, you know at build time which is which turns out to be really nice so if we drop this formatted message or, or rather add another one called farewell and I'll show you actually really quick some in case you haven't used message format syntax before, you the way that it works is you can do the syntax where you drop in like a name like this, and then you'd have a values prop where you pass in the name like that. And here we have goodbye Kent, and the translator can drop this name anywhere in the context of their string. And if we look at uh, main JSON again. Sorry. We have the farewell in there. We drop this, we re trigger a build, and main JSON's drop that key. So it manages that whole process for you. Now, what you do with this folder of messages kind of depends between how you want to work with your translators. We have to convert it to this format called XLIF, but that's kind of another thing, and I don't know what your translation story is, but yeah, this is sort of the the internationalization technique that we use, and it's it's been absolutely awesome. And there's lots of other stuff you can do besides just the format message. They have like formatted relative and pluralization stuff, and they also have a way to call into this API declared or imperatively via a method that you inject into the props. So one example is like a placeholder input or an input placeholder, you would use the imperative method. And yeah, if you have any questions, please hit me up. I'm, I'm, I, I hope this was useful in some way. I'm sorry it took me a couple days to get to it. But anyways, see you.